Hey, good Tuesday morning, March 18th. Michael Clark with BAMWX.com. We've got an outlook today on the planting and the growing season. We're going to talk all about the weather pattern expected here over the next several months, what the latest trends are. Um, a great video for long-term planning and looking ahead. So be sure to share it with a friend. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet as we continue to roll into doing these weekly for the 2025 uh, ag season. I'm excited to get, get rolling here. So let's look at the current setup this morning. It's March 18th and we have blizzard warnings and we have high wind warnings uh, and winter storm warnings and you name it, all the things. Uh, it's crazy. Down here in Kansas, we have red flag warnings for fire potential, high wind watch. We've got a winter storm watch. We've got a blizzard warning. Uh, here in northwestern Iowa and portions of eastern Nebraska. It's totally crazy. Blizzard conditions expected with snow accumulations up to 6 inches. With winds gusting, you're not reading that wrong, as high as 60 miles per hour. Um, totally crazy uh, to, late tonight and, and, uh, and through Wednesday. Uh, so just just incredible. And travel will be very difficult to impossible uh, out here across portions of Nebraska and Iowa. Even into northern portions of Kansas, you still have that blizzard warning. And it, this is all wind-driven. It's not really primarily driven by the um, just the amount of snow, albeit there's a lot of snow in the forecast. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn some things off here, and this is kind of a look at our, at our Clarity platform, which uh, you all can access for free, by the way, by going to BAMWX.com in the top right-hand corner and do a free trial. Uh, this is a look at the snowfall forecast right now. Uh, for these locations. And again, you can see this is a two-day total, nine inches in eastern Nebraska. Look at this in portions of northwestern Iowa. Anywhere in that uh, yellow color, that's a 12-inch that's a plus snowfall forecast. Southeastern Minnesota, 13.8 inches of snow and 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. This is, a, this is no, no joke here. No, no storm system to play around with. This thing's going to be nasty. Uh, again, Anywhere in that red is an 8-inch plus snowfall forecast. So what a crazy busy pattern because it's also going to come with the potential of severe weather. This is today's severe weather outlook, uh, marginal risk for some, a lot of these are damaging winds, of course. And tomorrow's outlook shifts to the east where we're going to have the potential for severe weather across portions of Illinois and Indiana. Um, listen, near the, uh, you know, near the area of low pressure, some hail, some damaging winds. Um, not much in the way of the tornado risk right now. There's nothing there per se for that. But then that storm system slides to the east, and it's out of here by day three. Let's take a look at the seven-day rainfall forecast. Again, all of these tools available in Clarity. You can you can uh, interrogate and do all the things. Uh, here into the east, another uh, inch or so of rain possible the next seven days uh, as the storm system picks up and heads out uh, to the East Coast. This is just a look here at the 10-day the forecast here out of Indianapolis. But note the soil temperature forecast, not anywhere near warm enough for any type of planting, even getting into late March. And another big storm system possible here over the weekend that's going to offer up bigger rain. So a lot of uh, detail and value possible there in, in clarity for sure. Again, go to BAMWX.com. I'm going to use this website for the models today, Polar WX here. Uh, Tomer Berg makes these maps available. It's a great model website for you to check out. It's free, um, and it's awesome. It's a great way to navigate. Let's take a look at the forecast going forward. There's the big area of low pressure, the big blizzard. All right, this is what we're talking about, 985 low. These very tightly packed isobars, very strong winds up here coming out of the north and east uh, with the, that are wrapping around this, the backside of this area of low pressure. Incredible, just incredible amount of wind there um, with this storm and just a very, very strong storm system. This is where that stronger storm threat is going to exist closer to the area of low pressure. Um, some thunderstorms, and some of those could be strong to severe. Maybe a watch box, maybe a severe thunderstorm watch with this. And the cold comes in behind it. You can see the rain taking off to the East Coast. Here's another system that will come in the weekend, a little weak clipper action. Friday night into Saturday, it'll bring rain and some snow mixed in. All right, and then the next storm system, another low pressure center. And this the interesting thing about this one is you see this parent low up here, the strong one. I want you to watch as I go forward, a secondary area of low pressure tries to develop. And this is going to be uh, Sunday night into Monday. 
where the potential for stronger thunderstorms is once again going to exist down into the deep south. All right, if that secondary area of low pressure can develop, um, you get another, this is a, a possible situation where you're running into some, some cold air damming, some interior northeast snow uh, late Sunday into Monday. Uh, not out of the question. All right, cold front works in, cold high. But look at this, more storm systems out into that uh, day 8, 9, 10 time frame. This is no... This is not a slow pattern by any means. This is a look at the 10-day rain numbers here. This is just the latest GFS model. And anywhere really you're seeing these, these purple colors, this is an inch and a half or more of, of liquid QPF forecasted. The Ohio Valley again, Tennessee Valley staying very wet, and up there into the north and east as well, inch and a half of rain or more over the next uh, 10 days. Note where it's dry. All right. Large section of the area out here still not getting a lot of precip where it's very dry. Look down here in the desert southwest. There's a reason for all this. There's a reason for this. I'm going to talk about it here in just a little bit uh, why that is. But let's take a look here at just the next two weeks from the EPS and the, the ensemble mean forecast for uh, rainfall. Again, that, that magenta is inch and a half or more. I want to show you the GEFS. A little bit more aggressive, a little bit wetter. I happen to think the GEFS is probably the better selection here. Four points east. I do. I think that in here, the best potential for rainfall um, and, 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 and over uh, two inches of rain over the next uh, 14, 15 days is obviously going to be here. There's a big divide, a big shutoff out to the to the west and down through the southwest, which again I want to talk about here in just a moment, but that is the idea right now. Um, it's going to stay active in the east. I don't have any doubt about that. We look at the GEFS 500 millibar heights, and again you can see the pattern right now as it promotes this trough into ridge scenario. This is your upper level heights. This is your high pressure, if you will, or um, you know, warmer heights. This is your trough. These are your low pressure centers running into this. And so that battle zone is in here, and that's why we're seeing all of this active, active weather. Okay, I'm going to take it out here, and I'm going to go into, this is, these are five-day chunks. I'm going to go to that five- to ten-day period. The mean trough works in, so it gets cooler into the east. This starts to pump up heights a little bit, sending, again, sending cooler air into the east for a time. Perhaps not as active in the five- to ten-day. Watch what happens, though as you get to the 10 to 15, right? We start to see this feature develop, the signal uh, coming back in the negative PNA and the, the big EPO signal developing up here in the, in the North Pacific um, and potentially going to start running things into another ridge again um, with, with an active pattern returning. This is very 2012-like. I want to just point that out. This, this pattern here, uh, one of the leading analogs right now is 2012. Now, I have concerns and things I want to talk about in this video as we look at the seasonal forecast outlook. Before I get there, here's your week two outlook. This is using the North American Ensemble Forecast System. Um, here, here's the thing. Um, I'm, I'm questioning the northern end of this. Okay, I am questioning the northern end of this in terms of the precipitation. Uh, th this, this particular forecast plot... Um, you know, it, it can it can offer up um, questions sometimes. In fact, a lot of times you can kind of see where the CPC gets their their eight to fourteen day forecast. It kind of comes from that product. It's kind of automated, automatically generated. I personally am, am leaning leaning towards the potential of this being, um, as I said, wetter in here, and possibly not as wet back in here. Okay, so that's kind of the thought process there. Again, these products, they can be, um, you know, they're, they're hit or miss. I know a lot of people check out the CPC in their week two forecasts. And, I, you know, I just, I go back and forth on them. Um, they're, they're, they're a good tool in terms of getting an idea. Um, but I, I, I struggle with, uh, you know, having a lot of confidence in them. The temperature forecast, nonetheless, looking at the same data, this this particular tool happens to do pretty well. Um, I personally think that um, you know we're going to be a little bit cooler in the east, um, but this is what I was actually trying to to show you. I, I I just have a little bit more confidence in this product overall. Let me see if I can slap that in here. I don't know if it's going to let me do it. 
Ah, come on. Let me see. Let's put it over here. How about that? There you go. There's week two GEFS. All right. And and again, you know, I can just I can just draw on this real quick. The signal, the the stronger signal is is certainly in here. And I, I just think that might be the ticket for now uh, for week two precip. Let's look at the week three and four. Um, again, I I have questions um, about rainfall. Um, can it happen up and through here? It it. I'm not saying it can't. There's a signal there. Obviously, the team sees that. Uh, I'm just worried about this in general. All right, I'm worried about this being a problem. I mean, you guys know the um, the drought the current situation for the drought map is, you know, it's it's really dry up there. Um, I'll show you the, uh, the the latest drought monitor here. We'll slide that over real quick. But before I get there, I anticipate this to continue to happen. I'm worried about this area kind of morphing with this area. It's very dry in here as well right now. All right, uh, let me show you the, the, the drought monitor here um, as it currently sits. And again, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, you, 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 you kind of want to look at this as, you know, something about like that. Uh, this area here in general, while there can be rain, uh, it just concerns me for expansion and growth. Um, I feel a lot better about eliminating this here into the east, but this is this this is this is concerning out here for a few reasons. All right, the temperature forecast for the three to four week time frame, a um, little bit more mild. Ah, zoom it back out. Below normal temperatures can ex be expected in the east. There's still going to be some strong cold fronts in the mix here. These cold fronts are going to offer up the chance for late season frost and freezes continuing, especially into April, in my opinion. These cold fronts can be strong, and the storm systems with them can bring a lot of uh, chances for severe weather. I would anticipate this area here to continue to deal with uh, above normal, I will put A in there, severe weather risks as we get into to April, no doubt about it. Okay. Let's look at the seasonal signals. This is the change in the weekly sea surface temperature uh, departures over the last four weeks. And obviously you can kind of see some things that that, uh, that stick out. It's the warming of Enzo, the rapid warming here of uh, the Central Pacific. Okay, and uh, this is this is telling us that we're, we're really heading towards this neutral Enzo. And uh, perhaps even a little bit warmer than, than, than what the data is, is hinting at. Um, this is the current sea surface temperature departure. Now, remember I talked a little bit earlier about why we're so dry here. And th that is, in my opinion, directly related to the, this is the PMM, the Pacific Meridional Mode. Um, it's cool. It's a cool connection. It's the water off the coast of the southwest. You're very cold. Um, it's going to keep the subtropical jet subdued and, and weaker. Now, we need to watch this. This is a drought signal. We need to watch this and see how this kind of progresses going forward. You can see the eastern body of the Enzo water warming for sure. Um, but we've got data um, that, that's starting to indicate, um, you know, some issues going forward. In fact, I, I, the, the one map, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually come back to these. I'm going to replace this because I want to I wanna direct your attention to, to this primarily. And then I've got those maps can come back. This is the International Multimodel Ensemble. These are all the big models from the big government programs. Uh, this is the American model here, the, the obviously the, uh, the European, France, United Kingdom, the German model, and the Canadians. All right. Uh, and they're all indicating as you get, here's June right here. Okay. And I want you to kind of see June, July, and August, how we go into this neutral to perhaps even slightly positive Enzo, uh, warm neutral. Okay, so we, we looked at years where evolution was similar to this forecast outcome. We, we tried to get ideas on that, okay? And what I want to show you are those years. I've got several maps lined up. I'm going to go right. Uh, I thought I had those maps. Let's, let's, let's get those maps pulled in as well. Where did I put those? Okay, here we go. So these are the years where we had um, Enzos that were basically, um, you know, Minus 0.2 to minus uh, 0 0.2 to plus 0 0.2, so teetering the edge of, of um, neutral, right? Um, the, the big idea, the temperature I, uh, idea is uh, majority of the heat focused in the western, northwestern third of the country. 
in these years and it being very, very dry here. Okay, wetter and cooler to the east. The eastern third of the grain belt can have cooler and wetter conditions this year based on the INSO evolution forecast. All right, let's look at the April, May, June forecast uh, off the latest multi-model ensemble plots. Uh, this is the spring projection. Again, you can see the above normal signal east um, for precipitation in the in the international multi-model ensemble. This is the multi-model probability forecast. So you, again, you've got this, you don't have one way or the other. You're a little wetter here. You can see a little bit of a cooler signal east here. This, this has a, a higher probability of temperatures being above normal. I personally think these temperature maps are very warm biased, regardless of how you look at them. I wouldn't put a whole lot of uh, stock into them. I would look at the darkest colors of this map. Personally, this one, I think it's got too much of a warm bias. It's, there's too much control by the Climate Prediction Center in here. I don't agree with it, period. Um, the, the precip one doesn't seem to have nearly as much of a bias as the, the temperature one. Um, okay, so that's just what I've noticed over the years. June, July, August, and I'll show them to you just so you can see them. Note, though, the how both of them are very similar with big concerns here in the central U.S. of some, torp of, some type of significant drought. Again, wet or east, okay? Uh, note the warmest temperatures. Again, I always try to focus on the warmest here in this area in general. This thing just thinks everybody's warm, but, um, and this one does too, but we try to focus in on the signal here is, is certainly a warmer and a drier one. We can look at kind of sea surface temperature uh, uh, profiles in general as well, and just match them to the current. This is the current. These are the top five years that match closely to what you're currently seeing. And you can see that. This is the blend of the five years on the right, and it's very similar. Right, it's just not, there's not a lot of differences really at all, um, you know, and, and it gives us an idea. These are the years where those those matched up the closest. Um, so we can plot those years, and it kind of gives us an idea of what to expect. Well, what I did is I plotted spring on the well, April, May, June on the left. April, May, June precipitation. This is very interesting. It's a very dry signal as you get later into spring into early summer. It's cooler east. Yeah, the heat, majority of the heat is focused out in the north and west. Roll it into summer, June, July, August. Again, the potential for precipitation exists east and south. This signal persists, which is what worries me. And the heat signal persists here, cooler again south and east. A lot of signals, a lot of indications going towards this. But I think there's a, certainly a possibility that some sort of a major drought develops here. Um, this summer, uh, late spring into summer, it's it's already there. I think it can be exacerbated or get worse. And and this is our this is our official forecast right now. Uh, this is where we have the the most intense conditions for the being the driest. Um, and I think a significant drought is possible here. Uh, the trend line yield this year is a 183. Uh, we're going 178.5. Uh, so five bushels below the trend is our forecast. And we're also forecasting a bushel below um, the, the soybeans as well, based on this projection. Again, it can be better east. Some of you could set up in a garden spot east and get lucky. Um, this is the temperature forecast east. Um, can still be warm above normal, um, but east is better than west and, and central. There could be multiple days of, of significant heat. Uh, so that's just something to, to keep in mind. So, uh, again, all this stuff, again, available in Clarity. Go to BAMWX.com, hit the top right-hand corner, start free trial. Um, you can get a free trial, no credit card required, 14 days. All kinds of stuff, ag-related, seasonal-related, long-range-related. Check it out. So, uh, if you guys got any value out of the forecast, again, share it with a friend. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll talk to you soon.